Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. My current goal at the moment is to make the bubble flowers. I'm just going to call them bubble flowers. It's to make the bubble flowers, and to do that, I need access to the portal to Alfheim. And to make the portal to Alfheim, I need Terra's Deal. And to make Terra's Deal, I need the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate from Batania. This thing. So I need some runes of mana, that's probably not too hard, block of mana steel, not too hard, prismarine, um, that's a default Minecraft thing, shouldn't be too hard, although I might have to go looking for it, but we need void reagents from blood magic, and we need arcane essence from Ars Magica 2. Let's start with the arcane essence, so that's just a bunch of arcane ash, an essence refiner which we already have, so I'm going to go do that. There we go, one arcane essence. Okay, now we need two Void Reagents, and... Oh, so this is going to take the the will. I wonder if it consumes it. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, this is all pretty simple, but we need the Hellfire Forge. To make the Hellfire Forge, we need Titanium Illuminide Ingot. Hmm. Okay, Lightwell, already got those Root of Fire, already got that. Fire Essence I'll need to make. There's a zombie next to me, and I'll also need to make the Titanium Illuminide Ingot. Oh wow, I almost died. Okay, I've gotten everything made, so that I can make the Hellfire Forge. Um, I'll just plop it down right here. Beautiful. Hmm, this looks a bit different from how it looked in JEI. If we look at it from here, it shows it just like this. Well, I'm guessing the demonic will goes in the center, and then these just go on the outside. So, string there. Gunpowder here. And then will in the center. No, will there. Uh, what goes here? Ah, I messed up the recipe a little bit. So, two gunpowder down here and two buckets up here. That should work. It doesn't. Ah, uh, okay, so here's where the demonic wills really come into play. So here's where we need to actually move beyond the demonic wills. That's just the super, super early game will quality. So here's what's going on. I actually don't have enough will to make the recipe. Uh, if we look here for the void reagent, if you mouse over this, it tells you how much will you need. So you need something that is holding 64 will at least, and it'll drain 10 out of it during the crafting. So there's a minimum, and then there's an amount it takes up. So I need a minimum of 64 will, which we're certainly not going to get from any single demonic will. I don't know what their max is, but the biggest one I have is like four. So we need to move on to Tartaric Gems. Did I, I'm not sure if I said that right. Tartaric? Yeah, Tartaric Gems. Um, they're basically like will batteries. So instead of these little demonic will kind of fragments, you can actually store all the will inside of one gem. So we need to make the first tier, the Petty Tartar Gem. Which we can make in the Hellfire Forge using just one will. So let's do that. And apparently this recipe here, by the way, is shapeless. So apparently you can just put this in wherever you want. So, if, oh, yeah, there we go, it's crafting. Ah, this is, so the center's for the finish thing. Cool. Okay, so we still need to get monster... Uh, will. And I don't think I want to do that the old way. I think there's some sort of a sword we can use. Alright, so to fill our Tartaric Gem, I think what we need to make is the Sentient Sword. That takes a Petty Tartaric Gem and an Iron Sword. And zero will, apparently. So I went ahead and made another Petty Tartaric Gem, because it looks like it might consume it. Let's see if it does. Yeah, it did. Okay. So I'm glad I made another one. I have no idea how much this can hold, by the way. I need 60, and I think that might be the next tier. The next tier of Jim. Jim? Jim? Let's go kill some things. See how much we get per kill. Oh, a little spirit. Yeah, this dagger is not very powerful. Or sword, rather. I think, though, the more will you get, I think it gets more powerful. 
Anyway, we got 1.5 will. Okay, this is going to take a while. <laughs> I'll be right back when I've done some more killing. Okay, I've completely filled up my Petty Tartar gem. It actually holds 64, so we're good to go. Let's try to make this now. Mm. I said it was shapeless. Uh, it's not quite shapeless. Alright, so that made the Void Reagent, however, it did make our Petty Tartar gem go below 60, so we need to fill it up again. And that's where I'm wondering about something. Apparently you can fill up these gems using the Hellfire Forge. I wonder if you can do that by putting Demonic Will here. No. <laughs> okay, got the will for it now. So, gunpowder string in two different places. Bucket. And that should be all the void reagents we need. Is that everything I need for the terrestrial agglomeration plate? I think we need the prismarine. I need to check if I have any of that. So, let's see where we're at. Terrestrial... Okay, so we got all the hard stuff at the bottom. Block of mana steel. Easy to make. Prismarine. Okay, so I don't have any prismarine shards. Mm. Yeah, it looks like there's absolutely no recipe for prismarine, so I just have to go find it. I'm not 100% sure where it actually occurs. I'm going to have to Google that and see where it occurs. So apparently you can get prismarine shards as a drop from the Guardians. That's those laser shooting fish things. So, let's try it. God, I can't see anything. Got some fish. Get out of here. <laughs> what are you shooting at? Of course, the hard part is, how do I even get the freaking drops? Hmm. And keep in mind that's in default, so it's possible it's been changed. That might not be a source in this mod pack. Well, I'm trying to find guardians close to the shore so I don't totally lose the drops. Okay, it turns out they do drop the prismarine. It just was going into my mining backpack. So I got 13 shards and a couple crystals. I don't know if the crystals are used for other stuff. Whoa, that's pretty looking. Prismarine chest. wonder how much it holds. Oh, Prismarine Crystals can give you something per 2,000 millibuckets RCL and 25 millibuckets of crystal. Nice. <laughs> uh, Deep Resonance is... Um, I've never actually used it, but I know it's a mod that allows you to generate massive amounts of power, but it's kind of complicated to get it to work. Or at least to get it to work well. I think I have a couple crystals, actually. Yeah, these. These are Deep Resonance. Anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. Sorry. So we're going to need three blocks of prismarine. And I think that's everything to make the terrestrial agglomeration plate. Yeah, look at that. I mean, the runes of mana off camera. Super easy. Okay. And I know for a fact we're going to want some sparks. Ah, uh, right, you need some flower petals of any color, doesn't actually matter. There we go, I'll make five of these, that should be fine. Okay, now assuming I remember how to do this correctly, and assuming nothing has changed in the mod pack, I th think to get this to work, we gotta dig out a 3x3. Three three. The terrestrial agglomeration plate is not the entire thing, it's a multi-block structure. And I think the lapis blocks go like this, and the rest of that is filled in with living rock. That's marble. I think that's it. It's either that or the reverse. And then plate goes in the center. Not sure if there's a way to tell if it's working until we actually try to use it. And then, again, the sparks are just a very fast and convenient way of transferring mana for certain things 
And in this case, it works. We can't use a spark with a runic altar. For some reason, it just doesn't work. I mean, you can place it inside of it, but it doesn't actually place it above it like this does. But it works for this, and it's nice because it transfers mana extremely fast. So let's also put some sparks over these pools. That will allow it to drain from these pools to the terrestrial agglomeration plate. And then I th think we just draw mana steel on the plate to generate terra steel. Please work, please work, please work, please work. Oh. I think I'm missing one little thing. I think it's actually mana steel plus something else. Oh, I've got a bunch of mana steel in here too. Let's check. Check the lexicon. Terra steel. And let's see. Tossing a single mana steel ingot, mana diamond, and mana pearl. Okay, mana diamonds and mana pearls. All at the same time. So let's just turn these diamonds into mana diamonds. Already got the mana pearls and mana steel. Alright, so this should do it. Uh oh. <laughs> Maybe I have this reversed. Okay, let's try that. Yes! You can see it's sucking mana from the pools through the other sparks. And there we go. Now we got one single Terra Steel ingot. They are very expensive to make. I think they require a huge amount of mana too. Let's actually check that. Let me grab the wand. So we're drawing from these four different pools. So whatever we draw from one, we can multiply that by four. Let's look at this closest one. You can see it's just past the middle mark on mana. Yeah, that requires a serious amount of mana. Okay. And... With that, we should be pretty well on our way to making the portal to Alfheim. I'll need to take a look and see what else we need. I think I need it in nugget form, because I'll just turn it all into nuggets. So, let's take a look at the portal. Portal to Alfheim. That's also a multi-block structure. You need living wood, no problem. Glimmering living wood, I think that's living wood combined with glowstone, no problem. And a pool. So the key things, the key kind of special things are the Elven Gateway Core and Natura Pylons. So, Elven Gateway Core. Whoa, what are these? Oh, that needs straight up ingots. Okay, so I'm going to have to make more. Nature Essence and Glowing Wildwood Symbol from Roots. Huh. Let's see. Oh, I can absolutely make that. Yeah, that's no problem. But this. Otherworld Leaf, no problem. Wildwood Symbol, how do you make that? You need a Wildwood Log. And it doesn't say how to make that. Okay, so I'm going to have to look that up. Alright, I think I've got everything together to make the Wildwood. So if we look at the... What is this thing called? The Runic Tablet from Roots. It's a whole ritual. Where you put vines, glowstone, and a verdant sprig in the thing. And then in the incense things, you put oak bark, spruce bark, jungle bark, and acacia bark. And then I think it says... <laughs> it's really weird how it flashes. Dark and then lighter. Um, all, all log blocks within about three blocks of the altar will transform into a new form that you have called Wildwood. So I got all the bark thanks to the bark knife, which I'd never used before. Had to go around to some different biomes to find all these different woods. But got them all. Got them all in the incense things, ready to go. So let's throw this into here. And then hopefully... I have my uh, fire starter on me. I do. Flint and steel. Is it working? Does that have to be an empty hand? Ah, there we go. Empty hand.
Haha! <gasps> That's so cool! So aside from using this to craft what we want, what else can we do with it? Oh, you needed to make the research table. So I guess that's to get further in... Oh, that's embers, not roots. Man, I haven't done anything in embers in so long. Torchmaster. Some actually additions thing. Oh, that's just because it stands in for any sort of logwood. Right. Wildwood planks. Let's see how that looks. It's really pretty. I'm sure you can't chisel it though, so I think you're stuck with that pattern, but it is really nice looking. Okay, so I think we combine that with flint. Yeah, some symbols. Make a bunch, that's fine. Uh, what were we making? Elven Gateway Core. This. There we go. Going wild with symbol. And, oh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so now we have everything but the nature essence. Now, I was having trouble with the nature essence. I was trying to craft it over here. It looked pretty simple and straightforward, but for some reason, yeah, it doesn't seem to be crafting. Even though these are all filled up with power, although for some reason they don't seem to be burning anymore. I'm not sure why they stopped. But if we look at the nature essence here, it's arcane ash in the center, as always, and then starting from the top and going clockwise, oak leaves, cactus, vines, lily pad. Oh, these are dark oak leaves! Oh! They look exactly the same, it's only the name that's different. Well, that explains it. Okay, we can craft it. Never mind, we can't. We don't have the reinforced stone. Oh. No, that stuff. Oh god. Ah, uh, yeah, there's no recipe way to make it. I have to get the sprayer again? Do I still have the sprayer? <laughs> I do. And it's still filled with construction foam. It's been forever. Huh. I forgot, so I spray the construction foam on and wait for it to harden on top of what? Was this some sort of scaffolding? Ah, I'll figure it out. Alright, here's the Elven Gateway Core. I've also gone ahead and made the Glimmering Living Wood, which was just living wood combined with redstone, or uh, glowstone rather. And I made the Natura pylons, they were pretty simple. That should be everything I need to make the portal to Alfheim. So let's do it. We need a little bit of room to do this. Um, I guess right here will be okay. Yeah, this will be fine. Okay, so we can visualize this. There we go. Gives us a nice little outline. I think it's the... Yeah, it's the core right there in the center bottom. So, that's the core. Oh. Right. <laughs> yes, I'm using an axe on dirt. I'm sorry. That goes there, and then we have the glimmering living wood. I'll just get everything on my bar here. Oh, right, that's it. Structure complete. Alright, so that's the basic structure. It does need power though. So we're gonna want a couple of mana pools. Mm, I'll just put them like here. Yeah, that should be fine. And I think the Natura pylons need to be above them. Like that. That looks right. I think the only thing I need to do now is just fill up the uh, mana pools with mana, and then I think that's it. And then I think we can get this thing going. Alright, mana pools are filled thanks to some mana tablets. I 
think to activate the portal, we use the wand on this. <laughs> there we go. We have the portal to Alfheim. And no, the portal isn't something you can go through. It's not like an actual dimension you can enter, but it's something you can throw stuff into and get stuff back. I think the lore of it is that there's like a, a race on the other side of this portal that receives all the items you send and considers them gifts and gifts you stuff back. But basically it allows you to get stuff like pixie dust. Yeah, pixie dust, you throw a mana pearl into the portal and you get pixie dust. Stuff like that. I think we can even throw living wood and I think we get... We get nothing. <laughs> if you throw something in there that doesn't actually have any equivalent that they give you back, then it just disappears and you lose it, so you gotta be careful. What is it, dragon wood? Botania wood. Dream wood. What do they want for dream wood? Oh, they changed the recipe. For Dreamwood, you need to put in Wildwood logs from Roots. Okay. Alright, well, let's upgrade our Lexica Batania, huh? Boop. There we go. Gives you kind of the, the lore entry on how the Elven Portal works and all that stuff. It's pretty cool if you want to learn about it. Okay, so now we've unlocked the next tier of Batania. So we should be able to make the Bubble Flower now. If we look at functional flora, yep, there it is. So everything that's in green are new types of flowers that have been unlocked thanks to the portal. Not even sure what all these do. Orchid, what does this do? We use mana to generate ores in nearby stone blocks. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I've never tried to make a, like an ore farm using mana, but I totally should. I just wonder if it only gives you the vanilla ores, or if it gives you all the ores, including, you know, uh, aluminum and stuff like that from other mods. If it gives you everything, then that could be very nice. Orchid Ignum. Um. Oh, this allows you to create nether ores in netherrack instead, instead of normal ores in stone. And it has to be in the nether. Interesting. But anyway, yeah, so now we can make the Bubbel. All of that's pretty easy, and we know how to make the Pixie Dust. Uh, the Rune of Summer, have I made that? Oh yeah, I think I did make that. Yeah. Alright, so we can make the Bubbles now. I mean, Bubbles. I've decided it's Bubble. Just gotta stick to it. And I think keeping the portal running does actually take up a small amount of mana, but I don't think it's much. Unless they've tweaked it in the mod pack. So I don't think I need to worry about this too much. And I can always restart it if, if it runs out and shuts down or something. Alright, well something I've kind of neglected until now. Um, I don't think I'm going to build the underground or underwater base for Batania just yet. Because I have some unfinished business with the farms. The agricarnations that we're going to use to make them super fast. Let's do that. Alright, I think the best way to make the agricarnations look good... Uh, speaking of which, where did the agricarnations go? Did I... Oh, I accidentally stored them away. I think the best way to make them look good and also just work well with the farm and everything is to turn them into floating flowers. So any functional flora, such as an agricarnation, can be turned into a floating variant, which means that it doesn't need to be planted in the ground, and it can't be washed away by water or anything like that. So that way I can actually have it above the farm. And it should still look pretty good, you know, not just on a weird dirt platform over the farm. And it doesn't have to be... Because, like, you could put it below the farm, and I have done that in the past, but it looks really ugly, and it's kind of annoying. So I'm just gonna have it float just one block above everything that grows, I think. Uh, but to make them floating, I always have to look it up, because it's a really weird recipe that doesn't even really show up in JEI. So, to turn agricarnations into their floating variants, you first need to make a bunch of floating non-functional flora. Doesn't actually matter what color, I'm just making orange in this case. And to make that, you need glimmering flowers, which is just flowers combined with a bunch of glowstone. 
you need pasture seeds, which is grass put inside of a mana pool, and then dirt. So with that, you get the floating stuff. And uh, I didn't have enough orange, so I'm going to make some yellows too. So you get a floating variant of a normal flower. And then you have to combine that with the functional flower. And then you get a floating agricarnation. It's a really weird recipe. Oh, I've got two extra. And with that, we should be able to place them over all of our plants. Alright, so let's place them. Pretty cool, huh? They look really pretty. Just little dirt islands they're floating on. And you can see the range of each one. It's pretty good. I'm going to put two over here too, but I'm going to avoid putting it on this side. Both because it's just kind of a mess and there's not really anywhere to put them in particular, but also because I really just don't know if it's going to work with rubber, and I don't even care. I really don't need that much rubber. I've already got, like, over a thousand of it. Alright, that's all cool, but we need to get mana over there for the functional flora aggregations to actually work. So. Let's get a mana spreader going on. I guess I'll just put one here. We'll see if one's enough to supply it. Uh, so, one thing you might think about doing, and I've done this in the past before I realized, is just chaining a bunch of mana spreaders together to transmit mana over long distances. Just have one mana spreader go into another, and then that mana spreader hit another mana spreader. But uh, I've since learned that that's really inefficient. Apparently, if a mana spreader connects to another mana spreader, it loses much of the mana. So the best way to do it is have it hit a mana pool and then have another mana spreader next to that mana pool. And I'm going to use diluted mana pools. They're just exactly the same as a normal mana pool, but they hold way, way less. So if you're just trying to transmit stuff over a long distance and you don't want to store it, then they're perfectly fine to use. There's no, there's no particular distance in which I need to place this. There is a point. In fact, I think if you... If we have this aim, like, here... Ah. See that? That's indicating that if your mana is connecting, if your mana spreader is hitting something that's further than this point, you'll start to actually lose mana. So you don't want to go beyond that, but if you go before that, then you can really place it pretty much anywhere you want, except of course the further away it is, the longer it's going to take the mana pulse to get there, which means you're not going to transmit as much mana. You're not going to lose the mana, it's just not going to transmit it as often, because it won't send another pulse until the first one is received. So, don't want to go too far. So I'll just kind of chain them like this. I'll have it hit here. Should get the first mana pulse in a second. There it is. Yeah, you can see they really don't hold much. Those little measly pulses are enough to fill it up visibly. And then we'll just have another one next to it. Alright, got a nice chain going on here. All chained together on top of here, and then they go to a full-size mana pool right there. Okay, so to activate this, I just have to connect up the flowers to the mana pool. Since I made the mana pool after the flowers, they're not automatically connected. But I just want to see how big of a difference they're going to make, because I'm pretty sure they're going to make a huge difference, and I can always add more if I want it even faster. So let's just look. This is with no speed upgrades other than just the worms helping the canola on a little bit. Oh, sorry, canola plant. You can see they're growing very slowly. Like, you can barely see them even move over 5 or 10 seconds. And you'd hear the loud sound of one of them being destroyed whenever it's harvested, so we're producing very little at the moment. Now... Look, like there's one, it just broke one. Now let's hook them up. Okay. Should start to see bone meal effects everywhere. Yeah, they're doing the work. Looking good.
They're definitely making it a lot faster, but it's still not fast enough. I want it to be like 10 times this. <laughs> Let's add even more. Because the canola is the most important thing. Like, I don't care too much about the sugar cane. Did I hook this up? I didn't hook this up. Let's see if it even works with sugar cane. I'm still not sure about that. Let's see. Should be pretty dramatic, because sugar cane grows really slowly on its own. Huh? That could have been natural. Well, while we're waiting, I'm going to place a couple more here. These will be automatically hooked up to the mana pool, because mana pool's already there. There. How's that? A little bit faster? <laughs> look at it. Look at all the particle effects. That is so much faster. Although I still wish it was faster. Now one thing I'm wondering about is, are we losing mana? Like, is this enough mana to supply them? Because if, if they're running out of mana, that would actually account for them being slow. We can see what their internal reserve is. They seem to all be full, so I think they're operating at full capacity. Yeah, they are. I just wonder if we're going to slowly run out of mana or slowly gain mana. There's actually a flower you can make that I've never made before that will actually tell you whether your mana pool is having a net positive or net negative. So it might be worth making. Let's see how we're doing on seeds. Oh, we have a crap ton of canola, but not very many seeds. I really need to make some sort of an auto-crafting system that automatically converts, like, let's say if we're over a certain number of canola, maybe over 500, it automatically will convert all the excess into seeds. Because we definitely produce more canola than seeds, and we definitely use more seeds than canola. Yeah, so it's definitely not as fast as I'd like it to be, so I want more, and also you can see the mana pool is run completely dry, which means we are not transmitting enough, man uh, enough mana to supply these. And of course, since I want more agricarnations, we're going to need even more mana. So there's a bunch of ways we could solve that. We could move the mana generation here. We could add more uh, more lines, more mana spreaders along the way. I could put lenses on the mana spreaders. Something I definitely should do is upgrade to elven mana spreaders. That's the next tier of mana spreaders. It's pretty easy. The elementium is pretty simple. Just to pedal, the hardest part is the dreamwood, which does require the wildwood, so I might have to go do a bunch of that ritual to get a ton of wildwood. But that would definitely be a good way to massively increase how much we can transfer. But, um, I think before that, I want I want my base. Like, I want to make my underwater Babel base. Dang it, I said Babel. Bubble. Because everything is going to kind of radiate out from the Batania base. And that over there is all just temporary. So, I think I'm going to end this episode here. And in the next episode, I think what I'm going to do is start to set up the actual proper Batania base. And start to figure out how I'm going to be transmitting mana over long distances to other places like the farms.